All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this new episode of Global Entrepreneur. I'm here today with Andrew Hirsch. Is that how you pronounce it? Yep. It. Okay, perfect. And uh, he's the CEO and founder of Olive Branch Pictures. So, you know, Andrew just sent me his executive summary and a lot of other uh, really cool things last night, which I thoroughly read. Uh, and I have tons of questions for him. Uh, but, you know, I guess uh, my first question would be, uh, if, if you could tell us a little bit more about your story, you know, how, uh, how you started everything, uh, and, and it's probably going to be super interesting. How did you get into, into something so crazy and so different to what everyone else is doing? Well, thank you so much for the question. Um, really this project is, it, it's felt like a, a culmination of so many really important factors in my life. Um, I first had the idea for what would become the story of Shira and Amal and all French pictures yep. in July of 2017. And this is after uh, two years uh, of undergrad at Wesleyan University. And um, you know, I felt like I didn't know who I was and I didn't know what I wanted, or at least I, I want to make sure of it. And I want to see what else is out there aside from you know, the, the, the bubbles I had, had grown up in. Um, so I, I left, I took a gap year and so I went to India for three months and I volunteered in a slum and um, I went to Israel for about nine months and I was a student at Tel Aviv University and I uh, volunteered um, in a think tank, the Mashtayan Center, and I worked at Highest, this uh, Hebrew Immigration Aid Society, uh, helping Eritrean and Sudanese refugees in uh, South Tel Aviv. And then I went to, uh, to Jordan. I volunteered in this Syrian refugee camp um, in Zatari. Um, it was a really amazing experience that definitely in informed uh, who I am today, I think. Um, I, I, I was, I was uh, working under the auspices of the South Korean government wow. who built this Taekwondo Academy uh, huh. to help these Syrian refugee kids learn discipline and honor and you know, give, give, you know, give them meaning and purpose in their lives. And, it's utterly amazing what, what they did for these kids. Um, like wow. they're, they're, I, I'm like friends with all of them on Facebook and their whole lives revolve around Taekwondo now. It's, it's amazing. And, and they've, awesome. they've really matured and they know Korean. And wow. uh, I was there teaching English and I got to learn Taekwondo alongside them. And the, um, the, the, the leader of the camp, the, the guy whose initiative this was, who built this up from, from scratch, Dr. Charles Lee, he had this really impressive philosophy um, of, of, of running the camp and, and how to, to teach these kids values that he walked me through is this very interesting, like physical lesson where all, all of these different, um, it's very, you know, like, uh, you know, dojo master esque you know it's like all of these different mm -hmm. physical lessons and physical challenges like taught you to, you know discipline and and values and uh so really yeah. incredible experience um wow and you know being being there um helped uh it, it solidify this notion of, of like humanism and um you know even if yes you know, so I'm, I'm jewish is, is a really important factor in my life i'd say Okay. Um, you know, both my, my whole family has been Jewish, I guess, for, for generations and generations. And um, that, that's, you know, I was brought up in um, self-conservative Judaism uh, as the particular movement. Um, and, you know, to Hebrew school and uh, at Bar Mitzvah and, I, just, and I, I, I celebrate Shabbat every Friday and we grew up keeping kosher and uh, visiting Israel and I have some family there. And so that, that's been a, a big, a big influence on my life. Um, so it's like, you know, being there for the first time in a you know, Muslim Arab society, you know, it was, it was a, bit, I was a bit nervous going into it, different people telling me different things. And I really want to, you know, go into that myself and explore that for myself and, you know, find commonalities. And since then I've really improved my Arabic tremendously and I've learned so much about Islam and I've, you know, I've really been um, trying to understand this notion of multiculturalism mm -hmm. has been a, a big part of my, my studies. Um, and uh, yeah, after that, so basically I, I had been, you know, developing this, uh, this, I, this, I was trying to develop some sort of expertise in uh, refugees and global migration and that sort of thing, that, which that interest started at Wesleyan. I was part of the Wesleyan Refugee Project, and uh, I'd written this paper for my nationalism class about, uh, you know, comparing the uh, Syrian refugee crisis at the time in 2015 to the uh, the Ashkenazi Jewish diaspora in Europe, how 
um, you know, how that society integrated into uh, uh, European culture and, and their, their, you know, unfortunate fate and, you know, what, what we can learn from how they integrated and how they were accepted and not accepted into society uh, for how, you know, all of these new uh, Syrian Muslim immigrants are uh, integrating or, or the lack thereof into uh, European society. So even, you know, it's been, you know, 2020, it's been, it's been a really long time since, uh, well, since, you know, since the, the Syrian uh, civil war started and, and you had these waves of, of immigrants, but it's still a huge issue. Um, and, uh, you know, so another, another thing that, that, uh, brought me, brought me there to Israel. So obviously I talked about a little bit about my, my uh, Jewish uh, roots. Yeah, I can talk a long time about that. Um, <laughs> but uh, at Wesleyan, um, which if you don't know, it's a, it's a small liberal arts college in Connecticut. Um, and, you know, it was there where I, um, I experienced pushback for the first time on oh. my, my notion of, of Israel, right? So, you know, I grew up uh, loving Israel and you know, visiting it and you know, being, being very proud Zionist, right? This is the story of these people that have, um, you know, of 2,000 years that, you know, lived in this land and then were kicked out of this land and returned to the land and then were kicked out again, faced, yep. you know, genocide and oppression and maintained their sense of peoplehood and, you know, throughout generations and, you know, and it finally came back after all this. So, you know, and, and so much culture and knowledge and wisdom that has, has, you know, held together through uh, teachings and through, you know, these, you know, the, the Torah and the Talmud. And it's just this, this, this amazing, well-preserved tradition and, and history that is, is, uh, is very hard to, to find in, in other cultures and, and histories. Uh, so there's just, there's so much there. Um, and, you know, so I, I felt challenged for the, for the first time about that. And also, you know, I was still very young and I still am. So there's still so much I don't know. Um, but I want to see for myself. Right. And yeah. so I made an effort to, um, to, you know, understand more about the Palestinian perspective and, um, uh, and another, another thing too is, um, yeah, well, it, you know, I, I was also, I, I, I felt, so let me back up again, this, this project really is a culmination of all of these different factors in my life. And I feel as though I should say exactly what it is I'm doing now before, you know, we go off on this tangent and then at the end Please, of the interview, that, I say, that's now this is what we're doing, right? Yeah. After, okay. after two hours. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, that's so cool. it, let me introduce, let me introduce uh, my project. Right? Sure. So all of French pictures is this idea to use animation to engage in conflict mediation, addressing global intractable conflicts, whether it's civil war or refugee crises or interreligious conflict or international conflicts. And the idea essentially is that uh, you know, children aren't born hating other people, right? And the best way to mitigate uh, intra global intractable conflict is through the education of the next generation. And that the best way to reach the next generation would be with an epic animated musical feature film. So that's my thesis essentially, is that an epic animated musical feature film, that's you awesome. know, like uh, Frozen or Mulan or Aladdin, yeah. right, is, is the most powerful, meaningful form of media communications. Mm -hmm. And this, this, you know, led me to, you know, the, the study of, of storytelling and mythology, right? I, I've studied a bit of like Carl Jung and, and Joseph Campbell. It was a, a huge influence on me. I, I'll probably go back to him uh, later in this interview, maybe. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it's, you know, it's, it's understanding these ancient and mythological texts as not necessarily literally, uh, you know, this is the, yeah. the and, and, and I, I just want to clarify that this journey is, is very, that this entrepreneurial journey, you know, it's very much not just a, you know, learn a skill and, and, you know, build a business. It's, it's this tremendous grappling with, you know, spirituality and philosophy and religion and, and life and love. Uh, so it, it's, it's just this, it's the most engaging thing of, of imaginable for me, really. That's um, amazing. It, it, it's, it's, I, I mean, constantly a struggle, but um, yeah, I'm just trying to wrap my head around all these ideas and it's really the, this pursuit of truth, mm -hmm. right? Um, that if you could create a story that is, is, uh, you know, has a production team, writers, animators, directors, musicians, 
uh, that are representational of two different sides of a conflict, right? And you have an advisory board of diplomats and religious authorities and historians and psychologists and film and media industry uh, experts, right? From, you know, carefully selected from all different backgrounds, really utilizing the, the in my opinion, the true value of diversity, you know, this diversity of perspective, right? How many different ways can we think about a particular problem? And, you know, understanding this idea of multiculturalism, right? So this, this comes down to this question of moral relativism and cultural relativism versus moral and cultural objectivism, right? Can you have a culture or a moral system that is better than another, right? You know, how do we, how do we determine that? It's extremely qualitative. And, you know, arguably one of the best ways to uh, determine that is, you know, through the interpretation of, of history, right? Like what, what cultures, you know, have, have thrived and, and produced productive societies that have, you know, created meaning and value and, and, and um, you know, innovative ideas and, and helped improve society, right? So um, just, just off the top of my head. So, and, and, and part of, you know, in being, in, in being raised as a Jew, right, I wanted to believe that this, this system of values that I was brought up in is, is one of those, you know, really valuable systems. But that yeah. at the same time, that doesn't mean that these other systems are, are worse or, or maybe they're just different or, or maybe they're even better, right? So it's, it's this, you know, if, we, if, we, if we're to take all these different perspectives and try to carefully fit them into a story, right? Again, in the form of an epic animated musical feature film for kids and for families too, right? Um, then maybe we can, you know, may, maybe through our inter interpretation of story, and, and that's, that's really the value of storytelling is that we learn, like, you know, you can learn from your own experience or you can learn from the experience of others. And stories carefully package a, a narrative of, of generally a protagonist, a hero that goes through these trials and tribulations. And in the process, they discover themselves and they make mistakes and they learn from them and they find mentors and they find allies and they, they deal with, with problems and, and, you know, enemies, right. Or, or, or adversaries, right. And that could be, uh, you know, this evil villain. That's, you know, the most basic, uh, you know, good versus evil, which generally is, is, it's not that simple, right. Everybody has, their own perspective, um, or sometimes it's man versus nature, but really stories are, you know, they inform how we think about so many different things. It's, you know, I mean, in Western civilization, you know, these Judeo-Christian values are, are rooted in, 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 in all of this. And then you also have, you know, the liberal Western canon, right? So it, like, there's this idea that I've, I, you know, I've, I've stuck with that the, the ideas and books and stories that have withstood the test of time that are still around today are the most true, right? So you have all these different truths and, and you, you're trying to understand all these complex ideas that have been, you know, told, you know, from generations and generations and trying to find, you know, why is it, why is that idea still around? You know, what's so true about that, that we're still studying this, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So going off on my philosophical tangent a little bit. Um, I so, <laughs> yeah, I think it's, I mean, I think That's it's fascinating. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, so, right. So, you know, I, pulling this together yeah. and, <laughs> and I honestly, I, this, it's hard for me. And, and um, I did want to add to that. So in, in addition to, yeah, it's being this philosophical, spiritual, religious, Keep going. personal like, quest, you know, to, you know, become a hero and self-actualization and, reclaim my creativity and pursue truth and meaning and you know I'll, I'll, I'll just add, and that's something too i need to add is um i always love cartoons growing up oh, right please, and it's yeah. like that was, yeah, that was so, the expression uh, <laughs> right so it, it's like you know we're, we're, um, i'll use this pinball metaphor right so we're all you know these little kids that grow up and we enter the society and you know i don't know you go to public school or private school or you, you know whatever you know, socioeconomic uh, class you're in or religion yeah. you know of, of your your family or if you're one you know one parent home or two parent home you know all these different factors you're like a pinball and you're bouncing around in this in this the system that we have we call society and you know it spits you out and oh look at you know look at you yeah. now like how who have you become <laughs> so you know in in you know i went to I went to school for two years and i took this gap here and i was a lot of a lot of self-reflection i was like who am i who do i want to be right so i was studying political science i had this idea that i was you know gonna be a future ambassador of the united states to israel maybe that, that was like maybe a, a dream of mine i don't know 
Um, but you know, I, I felt that, you know, what if, what, you know, what if, what if trying to be true to my, my inner child was, was a way of, of being myself, like, you know, for a living, even, you know, yeah. doing what I love, right. Following, following your bliss. So, you know, I, I and, and also I, 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 in, in all my studies, I discovered, I love, I love culture. And also I love language. I'm yeah. not that, you know, I'm really, really pretty bad at Arabic and, and my Hebrew's not that great either. And my German's not that great either. Um, but you know, one day I'll, I'll be like a polyglot. I'm absolutely determined for that, but I still love languages and etymology, but yeah, so, you know, loving culture. Um, I, that, 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 that led me to kind of, uh, turn a little bit and it, towards this pursuit of cultural diplomacy, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's softer diplomacy. Um, and uh, you know, I, I, learning about, you know, the power of story, right? All these mythologies that teach, teach values, um, that, you know, that, that could be the best way to, you know, help, help the next generation, you know, learn about the other and, and understand that we're all humans and understand what, you know, these two value systems that are competing actually are trying to say. Um, and again, if, if we could, if we get all these people together from these different backgrounds, you know, if, if we could, you know, it could, it might be hard, right? There's, there's two ways of looking at it. Uh, one way is looking at it from a competitive perspective, right? And the other is, is from a peaceful perspective. Um, and, and this also, you know, the, I, I studied Taoism for a little bit. That really, uh, the, the Tao Te Ching, if you're familiar with it, um, that really influenced me. You know, it's this, uh, this yin-yang system, right? Absolutely. Uh, the, the, the balance. The push and pull so it, all the time. Yeah, so yes. I, I really do feel like that has tremendous meaning in the world. That And, and also I, I, I studied Buddhism. For a long time, is the middle path, um, right? Awesome. So uh, it, it, you know, there's there's conservative and there's liberal and there's there's female and there's there's male and and there's collective and there's individual and you know and they can't exist without the other. And when you when you have the two together, you create one, right? So this idea of, of unity and and with that this idea of of God. Yeah. And I found that just so incredibly powerful and meaningful. And so that that also really really drove the, the pursuit of of what I was trying to the the theme the what I was trying to portray in this story, right? The, the, the most ba there's a lot of themes going on. But I think in one word, well, I, probably let's do, I'll, I'll allow myself two words. Okay. Um, okay. Would be balance and unity, right? Okay. Uh, that that's that's really what I what I would like to to try to portray from this story. And again, your job as interviewer, don't let me uh, go on too much of a tangent. Um, okay, okay. <laughs> um, but um, so, uh, let's see if I can keep bringing this back. Right, all right, a last, a last, last element, um, or there's so many, but a uh, you know, really Please. powerful one too was, um, so I talked about, you know, being driven by, actually, I didn't even say this yet. It's also it's this question of God, right? Go for you it. You know, Please. it's like, you know, you know, it's hard to talk about, it's, you know, the, all these, you know, and, and I want to, uh, I think it's really important, something we don't hear a lot um, in interviews and in public debates, right, is sure. people admitting that they don't know, right? It's like, oh, and I went to Harvard, blah, blah, or, you know, whatever. like, I know this, right, I'm an expert, you know, it's like, yeah. we need to have you know, humility and, and we, need to have, we need to have, you know, an open mind when, you know, like, I love that, you know, you're, you're interviewing all these people to, to learn things, right? That, that's how we should always approach every conversation, right? Mm -hmm. So, I, and I love this, this quote, I, I, uh, I believe it's, it's Socrates, I might be mixing up Plato, but it's, the more you know, the more you know, you know nothing. Yeah. I, I, I just, I find that really powerful. So, um, 100%. Yeah, that's, that's right, so, really good, man. <laughs> Well, so, you know, uh, my, my, my take on this one is the, you know, you have just so many interests, you know, in, in, in cultures and in learning more about your identity. And, you know, that's actually what I wanted to, to, to capture uh, through, through this, this YouTube channel, you know, because um, just as a little bit of background about myself, I, I kind of have like the same sort of the, the similar thing where I was also, you know, like little and I was like 16 and I didn't really know my background really well. And, you know, I, I think I, I briefly mentioned this to you, but my family is from Italy and then they immigrated to Argentina and South America, a different continent. And, you know, sort of my family's a distillation of like Italian traditions, but in a different country. And then, you know, because of my father, I ended up moving to different countries like Colombia and then, you know, I, I moved to the U.S. to go to college. So uh, that's how, you know, always being in constant motion sort of challenged my views on many things. And I guess, you know, throughout this journey, it was probably similar to you. 
Uh, and, and one thing I found really interesting when you were getting very philosophical, it was that you said that <laughs> one very uh, important thing to have to understand sort of different perspective, perspectives is to have a clear interpretation of history, right? How do you sort of challenge which culture is better than the other one in, in one way or the other? And I feel like a, a, a really huge part of that interpretation is not just history, but language, right? Because once mm. you, because once you, so I guess just like you mentioned, you know, there's a lot of history on for, for each specific culture, right? Let's say you're in, in any religion and you're learning through uh, the, the documentation, the archives, and, and, you know, your parents tell you stories and you're just influenced that way, but you're just getting like a biased version. So, or, or all, it's always going to be the case, right? Because if you don't get exposed to everything, then you're always going to have a little bit of bias. So that's why that relates to what Socrates said of, you know, the more you know, you know, the more you know, you know nothing. Because as you keep going and, and searching for these experiences, you're like, wow, I actually was, you know, so encapsulated into this one thing. <laughs> but in, in, in my opinion, you know, it, it's really cool that, um, you know, just, I guess the, the way I've always challenged my views was through language. Because uh, I, you know, I, I learned how to, how, to, how to speak English when I was little, and that really changed my perspective compared to everyone else around me back in, in South America. And, you know, after a while, I ended up learning Italian on my own because my, my parents don't speak Italian, but I knew that I had all these Italian cultural roots and I wanted to learn more about the origins of my culture. And, you know, sort of after learning the language and, and being native and in, in speaking the language and just that's how I could really understand the cultural nuances and the history behind everything. Because once you learn the language, you just get immersed into into the culture, right? You're, you're learning words that maybe are, do not exist in your language, right? Like sometimes yeah, there's yeah. words that you can't even translate and you're like, wow, this is crazy. Like now I'm learning a concept that I didn't even know that exists. And you know, like, yeah. And, and just that so many, so many people just don't know this word or this concept <laughs> or this idea. And I, I feel like that's super, super interesting. <laughs> You make such a great point. Um, and I think I have a really good example of that, maybe to, to teach our, our yeah, audience that's please. listening. Um, so and so I, something I've really loved is, uh, so I, well, Hebrew and Arabic are both really beautiful languages. Um, they're rather difficult to learn. I've been struggling with them for uh, you know, a little over three years, uh, Hebrew at least, and then Arabic I've been learning for about two and a half years. Um, so this, one, one thing I really love about learning these two languages, especially side by side, is how similar they are. They share uh, the same really grammatical system mm -hmm. and also the same root system that uh, every, every word uh, you know, has, uh, is made up of uh, th three letter roots. And mm -hmm. th th from these three letters, you get every different variation of this you know, one uh, linguistic idea, you can say. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and, and based, you know, so delving into this idea of linguistics and, and how linguistics affects the way that we see the word, the, the worlds, how, how our words shape, how we're able to communicate about our world. And, and it's, a, it's a, it's a difficult uh, idea to wrap your head around. And, and you're so lucky that, that you grew up uh, in a you know, bilingual home that you got to start to wrap your head around that idea much at a much younger age. Uh, yeah. So wow, that's such a blessing. Um, so I, to give the example, um, in, in uh, Arabic, uh, the word for people is al-nas, right? The people. And in, in Hebrew, it's anashim, is people. And this comes from uh, the, the, the root of, of this word is, uh, it, I think it's nas, right? And um, it, it's, it's, you know, it, it means soul, basically. So, you know, ancient you know Ar arabic people and is Isra you know is uh, israelites when they refer to people that you know that like this city has a population of ten thousand souls right so what is what does that mean about that particular culture and society it means that they they feel that, you know they're not just people they're souls yeah right I mean, it's a, it, it means that the, there's a base spiritual interpretation of the world right so that 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 in that one word right has a tremendous impact on the way we see the world so i 100%. thought I'd, I'd share that example <clears throat> no that's 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 really cool that's a really cool example and uh you know the other crazy thing is like once you sort of start speaking the language your 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 mind changes entirely kind of like your your personality changes your 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 views and everything changes so 
I guess, you know, part of, part of conflict resolution is really understanding languages really well. I feel like one, one thing that, you know, many cultures do, and, and I guess this happened a little bit when I came to the U.S., is that there's a lot of di different people who speak uh, different languages, but they're all scattered throughout. But really, th there's not a huge interest in, in sort of like adopting all these new languages into the, into the culture. So I, I felt like that was a little bit interesting at first to me how, you know, when I, when I went to the U.S., it's like I would, I would speak to a lot of different people from very different backgrounds, but people would just hold it uh, for themselves. You know, they wouldn't really talk a lot about, you know, which other languages they spoke or what are other cultures they have. And I just felt like, you know, having this channel would be, or this YouTube channel would be an opportunity for, for a lot of people to just really express their cultural identity, right? I feel like it, it shouldn't be kind of like suppressed. It should be, uh, you know, like spoken out to the world. And uh, Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Everybody has I, a culture and culture is beautiful. Absolutely. And every single person, every single soul has a very different kind of like background and, and story. And, 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 and I feel like it's very cool how, um, you know, you, you sort of mix all of those experiences and things into, into different characters in your story, right? So I guess yeah, I'm yeah. like talking about Shara and Amal first because I, I feel right. like part of, part of your story is really representing different viewpoints on, on, on characters that, that come together, right? Definitely, yeah. So, so um, uh, why don't you talk to us a little bit more about why you chose those characters, how you build those characters, and <laughs> and uh, and and you know what? I, I guess another thing I just want to mention so that we we get the conversation rolling is that uh, my sort of like two greatest interests in life are languages and linguistics, and also music. So I also you know I play several instruments, I I compose music, and I just found Beautiful. that. You know, this was super interesting because of all of the musical composition that you have behind the story. So, you know, let, let's get into it. I, I, I can't wait. <laughs> it's, it, is, it is a story, a story within a story, right? Yeah. Um, so, oof, where to begin? So I, I told you about all these different ideas I was grappling with. I'll just go through them again, right? So this pursuit of truth, right? This, this feeling of, of stifled creativity, right? You know, playing sports most of my life and just feeling I have this creative mind and, and I need to, to, do, to do something with that. And, um, you know, this, this, you know, grappling with multiculturalism and, and uh, humanism and Judaism and, you know, this the new, new study of, of Buddhism and Taoism, right? And, and now Islam, right? And so I try to understand all these different worldviews and history and <laughs> I'll just go on and on and on. Um, I, I thought maybe, you know, all right, I'm not, I'm not a great artist. I, I'm not a great musician. And, and that's something that it still kills me today. I, I love music so much and I, I just haven't been able to, to learn an instrument that well. I, I tried and I, you know, I tried the guitar and the piano. I keep putting them down and, and you know, so I, I wanted, you know, I wanted it so bad. Right. So, all right, I can write, you know, I'm going to learn how to write well, and maybe good. I can write a musical. Right. Yeah. And maybe that can, can, can bridge this gap in my life and bring me closer to this thing that I've always wanted to love. Right. Uh, so that, that's definitely one, one influence. Um, and <laughs> I guess, yeah, I'll top of my head. Another really powerful one. You know, I talked about God. I talked about self-actualization and pursuit of truth. I'm going on and on and on. Another really powerful influence was, was love really is, yeah. is, um, the first time I ever fell in love was was during this this gap year when I was in Israel. I met this you know beautiful, brilliant uh, Israeli girl who is a peace activist and a violist and goes to Harvard. And I was just so blown away. And you know she made a huge dent in my head. And I you know I just. You know, I was totally head over heels. I didn't, I didn't know what to think. I, you know, the hormones, right? Every, you know, this, this is what love is, right? It's like meant to be. All, all these crazy, all this craziness, and it didn't last, and I was left heartbroken. And I, I, it felt, it felt so meaningful in my mind, and I just needed to, to turn that, that energy, that passion into something beautiful, and. She inspired the protagonist Shira. Uh, okay. Originally, it was it was called the Legend of Shira, right? It was about an Israeli girl who uses who uses music to bring peace to Jerusalem, right? 
and you know, it's, uh, you know, she she was a violist, and you know, she was a violist, and uh, you know, peace activist, and all, all these things, right? And, and um, it, it like you know, Harvard, and and bring my own liberal arts uh, college experience, you know, really trying to to bring as much as myself into this as possible. Because another another really important one I haven't mentioned yet. Uh, I know I've been repeating myself a little bit, but is this pursuit of authenticity, right? That's that's something that. I, I find really fascinating, especially yeah. when in, in storytelling and media and entertainment production, yeah. right? It's, it's everybody, everybody. Well, I think a true artist should, should try to, or I mean, obviously different people, you know, there's, there's um, avant-garde and, the, but yeah, you know, I guess a, a, a long more classical line of, of, you know, creative production and artistry. Uh, especially in storytelling, especially maybe in, in film or novels, right? Is this this idea of trying to capture a zeitgeist? It's called this fancy word I yeah. learned in liberal arts college. Uh, basically, it's a German word. It means uh, the spirit of the times, <clears throat> and um, so it's this idea of, of capturing a, a cultural moment. You know, you know. So, so for example, right? You know, we're we're here. I, I didn't want to talk about the coronavirus in this interview, but yeah. You know, cool. So right now, it's there's inevitable. a lot of writers. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of writers that are home, with nothing to do. They're like, I'm gonna be the first one to write the epic screenplay about what's going on right now. Yeah. Right? There's, I, I don't know how many. There's probably thousands of people that are trying to get yeah. that screenplay done. And, you know, have it be the best and the first one to hit the you know these big major production companies to you know. So every you know people people want to want to capture what's going on in in our in our moment that we're all sharing together. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that's, and, and, that, yeah, that's part and of it. Yeah, I guess I guess you know back to back to authenticity. Uh, that's really cool because I really share the same belief, right? I feel like if you're producing anything, you have to be really genuine, right? And I guess this is also becoming a new trend, right? Because or or this is at least how I perceive it because everyone like there's just so much information out there and everything's delivered to you so fast right that everyone's just trying to get this superficial things like all the time like instant gratification and just you know so everyone's just trying to produce content so that it becomes viral and and not really just trying to be really genuine about who they are that's certainly and, true and what they and- do so so part of you know when i started this i thought you know i i had some you know, sort of like inner challenges at first, because I was thinking, I don't really have a good camera, you know, like, what if, what if I, I sort of like mess it up when I'm saying something? And then I thought, you know, whatever, I'm just, I have a, you know, sort of like, I'm just going to use my laptop and that like, you know, little camera and, and, you know, I'll try not to edit anything so that I can. Hey man, you're doing it. Yeah. The most important thing is to, to make it happen. Right. So, um, again, I, I'm, (laughs) so it's something I also probably want to go into is that I have, I have ADHD, you know, since I was in second grade. So that's also a part of this. Um, but because of, and I'll, I'll talk about how that's influenced me too. Please, but please. because I have ADHD, again, as the interviewer, I'm relying on you to, to keep me focused, right? So okay, okay. I'll go on a tangent and then I want you to be like, all right, you, I, I'll, you, okay. talk, you had that interesting point. I want you to go back to it. Right? Okay. Okay. So um, now, so now, <laughs> all right, hold on. So you talked about balance and, and yin and yang, and that's very important to me as well. Especially, you know, I've, I've done martial arts throughout my entire life. So I have this concept very Beautiful. integrated inside myself. Um, and, uh, you know, I guess Shira would be sort of one of those polar opposites to a mouth, right? But <laughs> so how, how, did you, how did you create the character of a mouth? And how does that balance Shira Oof. overall? All right. So um, thank you so much for the question. Um, so I don't know if Shira and Amal are opposites. Okay. Uh, Dev, I don't know if they... They do have. They, there is a lot of, of balance, and and, and I. It, it's it's complicated. So um, again, originally it was the story, the legend of Shira, yeah. right? Is a much more um, uh, singular perspective, right? A, a single narrative, um, and you know, just based on you know this this inspiration from this this young woman I met, uh, right? And and all these all these other factors, right? Um, and then, then, you know, I had this real, as I was trying to write, and again, I was, I, I, I you know, I, I'd, I'd done some creative writing. I'd taken a playwriting class, taken a, a me- class of memoirs, I, you know, I'd film classes, you know, but I never really committed to this thing. Um, yeah. And so for, this per- for the first time, I'm like, I'm, I'm committing. I have this idea. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend the next 10 years of my life making this happen. 
right? Um, and that, that felt really powerful to me to make this commitment. And that also goes back to the ADHD, right? It's like getting easily distracted from things and you know, picking up the piano, putting it down, picking up the guitar and putting it down. It's like, this time I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this, right? I'm going to learn how to write. Um, and, you know, and, and again, I'll, I'll, my, my studies are multiculturalism and, and peace and war and international relations and diplomacy. So basically, I, the, it, it very, you know, naturally stimulate this idea. And, and again, the, I think also this ADHD, I, I think it has, I think it, it, it can almost be like a superpower, it, especially when it comes to entrepreneurship in terms of ideation is the right word, right? So idea generation, right? So you, just, you, you just like, you know, you're in the middle of, in the middle of uh, Arabic class and you just kind of go off into your own world. Yeah. And, you know, all these ideas that have been swimming around your mind, you know, you're, you're, it's like when you're dreaming, right? You're, um, your, your, your brain is trying to, to grapple with, with problems you're facing. And again, the same way that stories inform us how to make decisions based on the decisions that the protagonists make, dreams also serve that same tool of, uh, you know, classic, you know, you're at the, you know, giving a presentation, you're, you're in your underwear, right? It's, you know, it's preparing you for, for that kind of experience or any kind of thing, helping you address your fears, yeah. right? So it's, it's, you know, when you're in this, I, it's, there's really so many layers to this when, you know when you're when you're in this just kind of like zoned out mode you're 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 actually i believe you're in this this um this brain mode uh that you're generating alpha waves right there's this uh, alpha and beta and, and uh delta waves and delta is like deep sleep and then there's rem right so um something i learned from this wonderful coursera class called learning how to learn which i recommend um i, I learned that uh salvador dali and thomas edison actually had the same, a very similar method to ideation, right? And that was, they, they would sit in, you know, and they would recline in, in, in some kind of, you know, armchair or you know, their, their thinking spot. And uh, Thomas Edison, you know, being an engineer, he had ball bearings and uh, Salvador Dali he had, he had a, a set of keys and um, they would hold it in their hands. <laughs> and when they drift off to sleep, yeah, the key and the ball bearings would, would hit the floor and, and startle them. And, wow. you know, again, they'd be in this, in this you know, half sleep, uh, you know, zoned out alpha uh, wave mode. And that would be a time where, where their, you know, their, their brain is trying to solve all these problems in just this free association mode. So, and, and so that's what I learned is, is how they came up with some of the best ideas. So, again, all these different ideas jumbling around my head. And I, and, and, and I thought, hey, you know, I, like, this kind of idea, this epic animated musical feature film, you know, this, you know, all these cartoons that I grew up loving, right. They're really powerful. They, they, have, you know, the kids, they, they, they still remember all the words from their favorite, you know, TV show themes. Like I'm sure, you know, all the words to the Pokemon theme song, right. Like, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, all the, you know, and, and Aladdin and it, they stick in your head and, and it, it's really powerful. And, and these stories and, and it, it, it takes, I can't tell you, how hard it is to write a, to write a really good screenplay. And again, you're, you know, with music and, and story and combining them and animation, it, there's so many elements that go into place and culture and language. And yeah. uh, so it, it's, it's such a, uh, an art. It, it is so it is craft. It's so difficult. Uh, so, but if you can do it right, then you can, you can, let me, I'll just finish this, this, this idea, right? If you please. do it right, you can create something really powerful. So, uh, so the legend of Shira evolved into the story of Shira and Miftah, right? Yes. So Miftah, it's a, it's a masculine name. It means key in Arabic. And um, that, was, uh, that was, again, in, in partially in this pursuit of authenticity um, and in, in this pursuit of, of peace and diplomacy. You know, I thought I'd create this dual narrative, a dual narrative epic animated musical feature film to, to expose the next generation to the humanity, culture, and perspective of the other. Right. And it, it, it was kind of like this uh, West Side Story esque, you know, Romeo and Juliet esque uh, idea, a little bit, you know, cliche, honestly. And the Israeli Palestinian conflict is a is a, a story that's been told many, many, many times. Um, and it, it pervades the media front page, you know, most weeks. Right. So, it, you know, so it, it became it became this. How do I avoid the cliche? Right. And and I, I put I again in this pursuit of authenticity. Right, you know, I still obvious, and I still am not culturally fluent in Arab and Palestinian culture. I really work hard every day to try to you know, understand what's going on in the media and film and art and literature and and you know talking to people. 
Um, but, you know, so, so I thought, you know, in addition to all of that, if I can pour my own experiences, right, understanding our shared humanity uh, in, into this character, maybe I can create an authentic character, right? So, you know, he had ADHD too, right? and, um, you know, it's the story of, 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 of their um, impossible love, right? Because something that's also, you know, okay, so I'll, I'll, I think I can make this a little bit more relatable. Right, so I don't know if you've been you've been reading uh, the news about entertainment, right? So um, in, in the last like two years, or you know, even before that, right? You had, you have the the Chinese market opening up to the, to film, right? So you have billions of people that can now go to movie theaters and buy tickets, right? Yeah. So the entertainment industry has a tremendous incentive to try to create uh, content that appeals to the audience. But the problem is, is that it's a communist government that has complete control over the media. Yeah. So it has to pass through the, you know, the, the Ministry of Information and Culture and Media, right? In, in order to, you know, it has to be acceptable to the, the values of, of the Chinese, uh, you know, government and society and culture. Um, so, you know, basically, it's, it's a tremendous challenge for all of these writers yeah. that are, are trying to, you know, create, you know, these Marvel movies that don't offends uh these 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 values of people you know uh, on the other side of the world with, with you know a completely different system from ours um and sometimes they, they create different versions and they edit things right so I, that i think that that's that's a kind of accessible notion uh so just to, just to, so you can back to relate it to what i'm doing right so um it, it's a tremendous challenge right so essentially uh what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to use the creative freedom of fiction and animation, right? You can portray any idea with, with animation, with, with just whatever you can draw, right? Um, to navigate these really controversial ideas. So you have the history and politics of the israeli palestinian conflict. You have the two cultures, how to again, portray them authentically and meaningfully. And, you know, obviously, and then, you know, you can't just show the positives too, right? You also have to show the negatives, but, you know, you don't want people to think you're stereotyping them. And, um, and there's also the religion too, and that's so hard, right? Because well, first of all, it means I have to understand Islam and Judaism very, very well, and those are you have to open very up difficult. your mind to very yeah different perspectives uh, that might be challenging your beliefs too, right? Definitely, a hundred percent. And and that, that's created my you know internal struggle too, and so I'm still trying to grapple with that and, and pursue the truth, right? Um, so you know, so I have to understand Islam and Judaism really well in order to be able to portray them accurately. And also, um, you know, to show the commonalities, right? That they're so similar, and, and you know, there's, there's, you know, it's just in my opinion. I, I really do believe it's just that, you know, maybe ten percent difference that we're killing each other over. You know, why yeah. are we doing that? Um, and uh, so, so, you know, it, it, as, as I was talking about, you know, censors in China, right? So, one of the goals of this, so it's not the, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is part of a larger conflict, you know, a more historical conflict too. Uh, the, or even two larger conflicts. You have the larger Arab-Israeli conflict, and then you have potentially, you know, the even larger and more spiritual, and philosophical, religious conflict between Islam and Judaism. Right? Who's 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 right? You know, uh, maybe they maybe they both are right. Um, and um, so so, in order for if the you know if the intention right of of this this story is to expose the next generation to the humanity, culture, and perspective of the other to help mitigate xenophobia and, and uh, hatred and all this propaganda, right? Oh, there's so many different media sources that are in the pockets of different, you know, oligarchs that, or, or governments that have their own agendas, right? So it's very hard to, to know uh, who to believe. I, I try to read as many different uh, sources as possible uh, to, to get a, a balanced perspective. Yeah. Um, so um, it needs, basically it needs to be able to access these people that might not normally be exposed to the other, or might be given, uh, a, a, you know, might be inundated with with biased information about the other, or, or you know, stereotypes and and um, you know, a, a hate filled rhetoric, yeah. right? So in order for it to be to in order for those people to access it, it it like a a, a good way, but a really hard way is to have these these uh, you know these these foreign governments uh approve of of this message right so it's extremely challenging right it's like you know is that is that even possible that's something that drives me yeah. crazy because i'm like am, am i doing all this in vain right if, yeah. if some you know foreign minister is gonna say no nope, this you know we're, we're not gonna yeah you know, israel's the devil or you know we're not like you know yeah. no 
so it, it's it's how can we work with these people with these how can we work with these governments how can we work with these religious authorities that I would, you know to to make it halal and kosher yeah right um and you know to to balance you know conservative and liberal values and balance Judaism and Islam and also Christianity right so it's a, insanely yeah. difficult right yeah I can't there, imagine right? how, that's, how that's... do you how do you do that so I yeah I but I so so story, so. Yeah, that, I, I I've been trying to do that, and, and I, it needs it like it's gonna take me another, you know. I think I think I can I can finish the screenplay in about six months, right? And it's gonna yeah. you know I, I have I have a number of advisors. Uh, one one of my closer advisors is actually the former ambassador from South Africa to the Palestinian uh, territories, right? And, and yeah, that, also that's the, that's the what UAE. I was gonna ask. Like in, um, in this in this pursuit of trying to understand so many things, I've I've seen that you've relied on many other people as well because I, I saw your board of advisors. And it's insane, not just because of the number of people you have behind your story and, and and everything that you guys are trying to do, but also because of of like their backgrounds and their perspectives. I saw that they are you know they they kind of like cover very different areas, but they are also from different cultures. So. How, why did you get this board of advisors in the first place and and how uh how did you manage to bring so many people with different views together right i guess that was also a very good part of of what you're trying to do is trying to bring people with different views together so yeah, yeah. so thank you so much for the question and uh you know and thank you for just letting me go on and on and on please, like that please. i appreciate that's it good. Um, <laughs> um so yeah so that's i mean we're still we're, i'm still trying to consolidate this board and, and so i think that's one of the most important pieces again so um, there's a lot of, you know, um, controversy surrounding uh, the idea of, you know, diversity and inclusion, right, and, and affirmative action and stuff like that, and, and um, uh, you know, retroactive justice, things, things like that. So uh, this doesn't have really have anything to do with that. But, oh, that's not true um, in terms of justice. But um, in terms of creating a team, you know, it, it's, in my opinion, I, I, I said this earlier, uh, this, it's utilizing the true value of diversity, right? Again, so in order for this to work, we need to achieve balance. And that's, how do you do that? It's so qualitative, how, you know. So basically, what I mean, what I've been doing is I've been just trying to understand all of the players in this incredibly interdisciplinary game, right? All, you know, all these they're politicians and ambassadors and media moguls and, and animators. And, you know, so I have this massive list, you know, basically I've been like um, a, what, what do you call it? Uh, like, a, I'm doing like the casting too. Right, the the recruiting. I haven't done it all yet. I mean, there's a lot of people on this that I haven't reached out to yet, or I, I I need to like you know know somebody in order to get their contact information. I need an introduction. Right, it's it's you know one of the single biggest limiting factors. You know, I'm mean, really you know in any industry, but arguably especially in in the um in the film industry is is you know who do you know, right? Uh, you know, you know maybe if it's good or bad, nepotism is it does exist in the world. You know. Um, so, you know, so, I, well, so, so three, three of, of my advisors, um, were professors of mine when I was at Brandeis University, um, uh, Hill Shikaki, Shai Feldman, and Abdul Monim Said Ali. So they, that was, that was also a huge influence on me. Um, I took a class basically on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict that was taught by an Egyptian, Israeli, and a Palestinian who co-authored a multi-narrative textbook wow. on the Arab-Israeli conflict called Arabs and Israelis. So that is, that's one of my many proofs of concept. Um, I don't know if you saw the, 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 some of the, uh, some of some proofs of concept we've learned from at the bottom of my webpage. Um, you know, that's just the tip of the iceberg really. Um, but basically it's like, okay, um, one of, one of many proofs of concept, if these guys can all come together from different backgrounds and perspectives and write a textbook on the Israel, Arab Israeli conflict, then maybe I could write a fictional story, right? If it's fiction, you have a lot more, room to for interpretation and and yeah. you know to to you know create ideas and characters and dialogue so you know that was that was that was one of my many influences and i've, I've you know tried to consult them and it's really important because um you know it, it's so controversial right so if i if i if i'm able to, to create the to produce this story it, it could very well you know almost definitely come under very heavy scrutiny right you know who are, you're a jew right you're, you're biased right or yeah. or you know, you, you have an attachment to Israel, you have family there, you know, whatever it is. Um, so, you know, and, and we don't, you know, you know, we think this way, you know, this, even if, even if it, if it um, uh, exposes some of these other perspectives as also true, it's like, no, that's, you no know, only, only we're true, right? Like, so there's 
basically I, I need the credit. Uh, yeah. I need the credibility. I need the perspectives yeah. in order for other people to buy into it too. I need yeah. the, the representation. So that, that's it, it, like, that's really, it, it's, it's, I need it. it, it it's absolute necessities. It, it's the true value of diversity and, and uh, of perspectives and, and ideas and backgrounds. Um, so I've, and I've been trying to, as much as I can to, you know, be inclusive of, of, you know, the, the female perspective and the male perspective and, you know, Arab and Israeli and Jewish and Muslim and Christian and, and all kinds of different nationalities. And, you know, so uh, one of my co-founders is, is Iraqi and another one is, is Pakistani and you know, all these different advisors. And really I, I would love to have an advisory board of hundreds of people. The, the idea is it's, as something that, you know, that you've heard of crowdfunding, right? Uh, there's also crowdsourcing. So um, it, it, again, it's this balance, right? So if, if we're, if we're consulting with um, the, the ministers of, of information of all these, you know, different countries to try to, and, and also, you know, these religious authorities to try to, you know, make it this, you know, kosher and halal and, and historically politi politically acceptable, right? Uh, we're also making this democratics. Yeah. is into the story we're trying to tell and again this could just be too impossible to do but i think like you know it, it's 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 fascinating and it's sure as hell worth trying absolutely yeah that's that's really cool so <laughs> let's let's go back to this idea of bringing two things together so um wh when i sort of read the acts that you wrote about shira and amal one thing that really caught my attention was that shira uh, would teach amal how to speak he uh, hebrew and amal would yeah. teach how to speak arabic uh why why did you create that relationship that way oh i really really appreciate that question um and so again a, a lot of these ideas like so stories that they they can change so quickly right so like frozen for example like you know it was this completely different story right where, where Elsa was like you know this evil ice queen and you know th and then they they completely you know changed it like 12 months before production something like that yeah um so all these for, I, I I should also say all of the ideas in the story which you can read on my website right now uh, all of branchpictures.org um it, it's all subject to change right anyway, so this isn't about you know originally yeah. it was about me right it was it was this you know this the story inspired by you know this woman I loved right and then it was this love story where I was the, I was the Palestinian, you know, uh, Miftah and, and she was Shira, right. And this, uh, you know, this love that can never be right. Um, and, and then I was like, Oh, well, <laughs> so it took, it took, you know, a lot of uh, heartbreak, but I'm like, okay, I need to try to separate myself from this. This isn't about me. This is about whatever story we can produce that's able to actually, you know, access these other people to ex expose them to each other yeah right and, and and do so authentically and accurately and meaningfully and, and i guess and that's tell a hard, great story yeah that's a that's a hard thing to do as a founder because usually you know you're so rooted into your vision that just trying to you know you, you kind of have like a vision of how things are done and then when you have a team of people constantly challenging your beliefs it's kind of hard to you know separate apart from what you think you have to do and, and and sort of what other people think you have to do it's just keeping that balance all the time because at one point you also have to also pursue your vision. So Definitely. I guess, you know, so, in, in, in our case, when we were developing the technology, I had, you know, I just wanted to go from zero to a lot of innovation all at once, but I didn't understand that there were a lot of steps in between where this was going to be a gradual process. And I couldn't just, you know, bring in like all of the innovation at once because it was not going to be feasible. So I kind of had to, you know, juggle with that as well. So saying, okay, maybe I'll, I'll gonna, I'm going to have to like step back and, and sort of, you know, like listen to my team and sort of simplify things a lot more. Uh, that's definitely complicated. All right. So that leads me to a really good point that I want to make. And sure. then I want to talk more about business. Cause I think that's something that we haven't, we haven't discussed yet. So let's but here I, I want to talk about uh, leadership and listening to people. Right. Yep. So basically uh, the, you know, in addition to being a writer, right. The I've, I've understood my role in this God willing uh, that I am both a catalyst and a generalist, right? So I'm a catalyst in the sense that I had this, this idea came to me, you know, maybe, maybe it came from above, maybe it came from inside, maybe, uh, you know, maybe it came from outside, maybe it came from a combination of all three, right? Um, but, you know, so I, I had this idea and I'm trying to turn this idea into reality, yeah. right? And I'm trying to bring together all these people and 
work really, really hard and, and understand lots of different complex ideas to try to create something that other people will be interested in and that can actually, you know, uh, be of value to them and create meaningful, positive impact, right? Um, so a, a, again, as, this, as one of the most powerful limiting factors here is other people and, and collaborating, you know, this, this, you know, enthralling notion of creative collaboration of different people, different ideas bouncing around and, you know, trying to prove something we all agree on, especially something so controversial, you know, not, not only is it, is it fascinating, but um, it's also, it's really important. Uh, and so that, that brings me to this point about being a generalist, right? So I, I you know, about three years ago when I, when I started this, you know, or when I first had the idea, so I said 2017, I, I later, I, I first, um, you know, filed the LLC in October, 2018. So that's pretty good, you know, first start. And then we, yeah. got, we won our first competition in, in um, February of 2019 and our second one in March 2019. And then, uh, you know, I, I got to, you know, be, uh, compete with you in, in the, um, the uh, national, the U S national student entrepreneurship award. Uh, and I, and I, so I, I won the Connecticut State Entrepreneurship Award in order to, to be accepted to that competition. So I'm mm-hmm. so grateful for that. Um, and it's a great experience. Um, but um, where's I going with this? Right. So, you know, it's like at, at the time. Same idea. Trying to bring all these different people and ideas together and, and this massive story. It's like, I'm not, I'm not Steven Spielberg. I'm not JK Rowling. I'm, I'm not Leonard Bernstein. Like I, I don't know how to compose. I've never written a, a screenplay before. Right. So it was so hard. I, I got to tell you, like in terms of, um, you know, this, this hero's journey, right. And that, that, you know, that, that was uh, inspired by my studies of uh, Joseph Campbell. And that, that also, it really helped me um, get through all this, but Oh my God, I can't tell you. just the the feeling of doubt and and failure right? you have to yeah. fail so many times before you can succeed and when you have when you have such a immense idea and, and burden right it, it's like oh my god I, you just want to give up all the time but it's been three years i'm still doing it i can't get out of my head so yeah I'm gonna, for sure I'm keep doing it until, until i get it done so um, you know i i feel like so back to back to the limiting factors i guess sorry yeah, can sorry. i just can i just want to finish the Please, notion of, of course if, again yeah so absolutely sorry, sorry. Um, so in throw. addition in addition to being a catalyst right yes. and you have to be a leader but it's again i, I so I, who am i right i don't i don't know this i'm not an expert in islam or judaism or music or you know, I'm a pretty good writer, I think, but, you know, uh, there's a lot of people that know a lot more than I do and, you know, culture and, and history and, and film and business, all, all these different things. So I need to be able to bring a team together from all these different backgrounds, and all these different expertises, and I need to know how to, how to listen to them. Cause, and I, you know, I need to trust that they know more than me. And that's easy, right? Because, you know, every, you can learn something from everybody, right? Um, so, yeah, so uh, generalist in the sense, uh, sorry, let me make this last point, coming back to the ADHD, right? Yep. So it's like, you know, I get distracted easily, right? I, you know, there's so many different interesting things out there. It's like, you know, I, it's hard to, hard to stay focused on one. So it, part of this project, it also brings together, you know, all these different fascinating interdisciplinary ideas. So I get like, it's, if you ever played the Wikipedia game, it's like, uh, you know, yeah. you just Constantly bounce around from different links and you, yeah. right? So it's like, I, I it's, it was, it's almost like I have permission to get distracted because it's all, it's all relevant. Yeah. Right. I can you know learn, go from, bounce from Islam to Judaism and Christianity and to language and Hebrew and Arabic and I'm all I'm, I'm music and you know, uh, spiritual music to secular music. So uh, it's all it's all it's all learning. It's all relevant. And so and um, yeah. So you want to say something? <laughs> yeah. Please. Sure. No. So so back to the limiting factors. I guess you know part of sort of uh, challenging those limits is to get inspiration from other people and you know just like like you mentioned i think you said joseph campbell not sure if uh that's you know so i when i was reading the act i saw that there's this one character called edward barenboim so i was gonna ask is that inspired in daniel barenboim the guy who that yes the thank you You're, yeah you, you get snaps you're a clever man um so it's actually i don't know it, it, it's kind of funny because um Basically, what I was trying to do is I was trying to amalgamate Edward Said and Daniel Barenboim, wow. who together in the 90s co-founded one of the first Israeli-Palestinian multinational orchestras, mm-hmm. basically in the name of peace. Yep. Right. So it's a bit it's a, it's hard because 
uh, Edward Said's first name happens to be Edward, which is a very like uh, Anglican name. So it doesn't immediately connotate that this is this, you know, multi identity, multicultural person. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and there's a lot of that. This character is, is, there's a lot of different influences behind him. Right. And it's trying to, you know, borrowing from like Leonard Bernstein and, um, uh, it's, it's some other famous uh, composers and, and uh, peacemakers and um, uh, th- throughout history, right? So, and that also goes back to this idea of, of this pursuit of, of authenticity, right? It's, it's every one of these characters is inspired by historical figures and, and uh, philosophies and, and, you know, just really, and really trying to, to, you know, in history and really trying to, you know, find the, the right combination of, of people and ideas to, create an authentic and meaningful character that serves a particular purpose in the story, not only in the, the sense of narrative, but also in the sense of exposing our audience to, to new ideas and, and the many different truths that exist. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so the, the um, yeah, so, so that, that's, um, that, that's this, he's kind of one of these mentor characters and I'm, I'm still building him. He came in a little bit later. Um, the first mentor character and so this, this monolithic idea of, the mentor, right, in, in this hero's journey, um, was is Professor Busingwe, right? So he's this um, uh, former Rwandan conflict mediator who, um, I use the phrase, cut his teeth during the Rwandan genocide, ser- serving as a you know, uh, administrator, kind of conflict uh, resolution person. And, um, you know, so I, I, again, these characters are all so complex, I'm, I'm always still building them, but so I imagine that he uh, he lost his son in this uh, in this this, this horrible tra- tragedy, um, and and uh, now he he teaches uh, war and peace at Ivory University, which is um, I, don't know, I hope the the name you know kind of has this idea. I mean, originally it was, it was meant to kind of connotate you know this this the Ivory Tower right and uh, the Ivy League somehow still too, and yeah. that was you know this this Harvard girl right and and um also you know, my own experiences and and uh you know, the Brooks college and and uh you know, under my understanding of the educational system but um so i really wanted to so i'll, I'll just I'll address that idea and i'll go back to professor basingway so i really want to create this this you know I, i've been largely unsatisfied with my college experience unfortunately um you know, i've really felt like i just wanted the freedom to explore my passions and um there's all these rules and you have to all these requirements and uh, in, in my opinion, I think if you have somebody who's you know, smart and curious and ambitious, you know, you know, especially if it costs a lot of money, you know, it should be the sky's the limit. You know, let them just engage in because, you know, we, we want to succeed. We want to achieve things and we want to learn things. If, if yeah. you give us the tools, you know, if you, if you give us the keys, we'll, 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 we'll make it happen. We'll drive. Yeah, we'll, for we'll, sure. Yeah, so um, yeah. that's, that's what I believe. Um, 100%. And um, so I want to, I want to create, you know, this idea of, what a university should be, right? So, you know, just uh, this, this, you know, it's beautiful. But, and it, it, it's gotten some, under some changes too, because, you know, um, unfortunately, you know, in my, my, you know, my history, uh, and it's not, I don't, I, I try not to, it doesn't bother me that much anymore, but, you know, definitely um, grew up, uh, you know, with a lot of pressure to try, you know, again, really, really hard. And I think that as a result of that, I, I didn't, you know, explore myself as much. I didn't find myself. I just, you know, tried to get good grades and, you know, school didn't come easy for me again, the, you know, ADHD and whatnot. Um, but so, so I, I, you know, tried to push away from the prestige, right. And, and try to create a more common space. Prestigious, you know, uh, uh, overbearing university to a more inclusive, you know, more open-minded, place of, of, of learning where, you know, just bright people want to come together to learn. Right. And, yeah. um, and, and so, so Shira Namal, they get uh, recruited by this uh, Edward Baron Boyum, who's, you know, he's on, he's, you know, maybe he's just on tour with, um, you know, in, in, in the land, in the Holy Land. And, yeah. and it's like Shira's, uh, you know, they're both musicians and he hears them play and he wants to recruit them to his university. Right. Um, so now I'll just go, um, right. So Professor Basingwe, this is kind of interesting is he was originally Professor Killian Niemöller, right? And uh, I got the idea originally from Professor Killian Niemöller because when I was in the, the, the refugee camp in Jordan, um, I learned about this guy. Um, oh, I can't even remember his last name anymore, but uh, the, 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 the head administrator of this refugee camp was this, this German guy who worked for the UN uh, named Killian something. I can't remember his last name. Um, so, you know, I just, he, he's, he's a very inspiring figure and, and I imagine maybe that could have been part of 
this guy Killian Niemöller's past to that he was this, you know, this conflict mediator. Um, and then Niemöller comes from uh, Martin Niemöller, right? Who's this, um, uh, he, I, think, I believe he's a priest during uh, World War II and um, uh, German. And um, he wrote this famous poem, First They Came. And it's, you know, first they came for the, the communists, but I was not a communist, so I, I said nothing. And then they came for the Jews, but I was not a Jew, was, uh, so I said nothing. And then they came for me, and there's no one else, uh, no one else left to speak for me, right? So yeah, again, in terms of you know, trying to create you know, authenticity, so it's you know, borrowing from different historical figures. But then you know, in consultation with a professor of mine from Brandeis, um, who's, who's one of my advisors, um, you know, we, we thought that this could... Um, be an opportunity, uh, this character, to add more, uh, I guess, racial diversity in this case, uh, and, and also yeah. you know, cultural and, and ethnic diversity. So, um, you know, we decided to, 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 you know, he's from Rwanda, and, and he, he, it, it's a very similar experience, um, but, uh, you know, but it, it allows for, for more diversity. So I, I, I saw it as a win-win, um, and, you know, borrowing uh, um, professor, uh, professor Anstance Bisingue is his first name. So I, I, you know, I tried to find a bit, I, like there's so many different ideas, it's hard to remember sometimes, but um, I think That's Bisingue cool. came from the name of an actual mediator during the Rwandan genocide, a, a government official, and, uh -huh. and uh, similarly with Anstance. Anyway, we can keep going. Uh, there's so, so much to it. Uh, do yeah. you have another question? Yeah, sure. So, so my question is, you know, you, you took Baron Boehm as an example, and I'm going to, I'm going to talk a little more about him because that's sort of like the one character I really know well. Uh, that's okay. Me, so I'm, I'm relatively, uh, you know, I, I, I know a little bit about him and, you know, he's from Argentina. Uh, he was born right, yeah. just like me, but you know, he has also a huge set of, of cultural backgrounds. He speaks like it's eight true, languages. Yeah. He's one of the uh, well-recognized musicians in the world as he directs the uh, Berlin Orchestra. Um, you know, he has composed uh, like utterly amazing music. And uh, I guess my question is, did you get inspired by him because of sort of his background? That speak is like, like he speaks German. He also sort of has this dual <laughs> background between the, the would... Israeli-Palestine uh, conflict. Have you talked to him already? Like, did you have the chance to talk to him? <laughs> I have not yet, I'll say. I definitely want to get him on board. There's a lot of people, like, a lot of big names, maybe unfortunately, but also, like, I think I can get him too, which is cool. But, um, yeah, I think, I mean, I think, he, I think you might really, really like this. Um, and it would be such a, such an honor and privilege to, to work with him. Definitely, the answer to your question is yes, I was inspired by him, among many, many, many other people. Um, and he has his own perspective too. I mean, so, it, yep. it, it, like, you know, on, on Israel and, and on, Palestine and, and on life so you know again it, it's this idea of, of balance that a lot of all, a lot of these all these different people with all these different ide ideologies and backgrounds and perspectives are all there's at least some truth to everything they're saying so we want to try to extrapolate all of that truth um you, so ju I just yeah oh, you, you, sorry, you, so, yeah so sorry uh you know what, what I would feel like it would be really really cool so just like you said you know you may not have like too much experience with music and but you're really good at writing and sort of like mixing in uh, all the music together so it would be really cool if you could have baron Boehm to compose some music for you because of two things that's right? first of yeah. all <laughs> the credibility right and second of all because he's also very into this so i would say let's try to get Definitely him in contact that. let's try I, to get I him we'll do music. that yeah, yeah I'll, I'll try I, to help I, you I mean, out I, i've already Ah, I yeah. so appreciate that. And I gotta say, I mean, I've, I've, I've spent like, I think probably much more than 3000 hours, you know, thinking about this and working on this. So I have already thought about that. I, I would love to have the uh, East West Vaughn or orchestra actually be, you know, the, 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 the pit orchestra for the, the score. It would be amazing. And, and I'd love for, for his help composing. It's actually, so what's funny is that, yeah, so it's Chirin and Amal, they, they come up with this duet, this song of, song, a song of hope. Right, and it's you know they 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 meet in this class taught by Professor Basingwa and War and Peace, and they're immediately assigned as partners to present a case study yeah. on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, and they're like, whoa, I can't do this, like you know, like I like I hate her and I hate her and you know she like you know I hate you know Israelis are awful and Palestinians are awful and I can't work with her, and then the professor's like, oh well, you're both musicians, why don't you you know if you can't you know, sort this out with, with words, you know, maybe you can sort this out with music and compose a duet and, and they, you know, they spend hours and hours and, 
you know, extrapolating from their own experiences, their, their shared love of music, their, their pain from having lost their brothers, even, you know, the, the shared experience of, uh, of, of, of living in Jerusalem, but also of, of creating these imaginary friends, Khalil and Mizmar, who I want to talk about if there's time. Please, um, and, and they compose this, this, beautiful, this beautiful duet. And then the idea is that uh, uh, Daniel Barenboim's character, or his, at least his amalgamated character, later in the story that he, he agrees to bring his orchestra to compose a full orchestral accompaniment to yeah. Shir Namal's duet to perform uh, as the grand finale for this, this uh, intercultural benefit concert that Shir Namal uh, organized. And again, so this is, um, you know, the, the idea is that uh, Shir Namal becomes social entrepreneurs. And I want, I want to create Shir Namal as role models for really young women everywhere, but more specifically, you know, young Israeli and Palestinian women and, and In, you know, men, women, and boys and girls, right? Which is which is difficult. Um, uh, so yeah, so they you know they they raise the money and they organize and they get all these musicians on board and they you know and and they you know so so I, I in the process of them doing that, I want I want that to to teach young kids how to actually take an idea and turn that into a plan and then execute that plan. I think that's so important. Um, that's Okay, so, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I think I think we're definitely. Uh, I'm I'm really gonna help you try to get in contact with Baron Boy. I think I think I have some contacts there, so I think it'll be awesome, and we could wow. get a success. I've been thinking about that for a long time. And, yeah. and, so I, oh, I want to. All right, let me let me um talk about so jumping from Daniel Baron Boy to yeah. uh I don't know if well you probably know it's like uh, it's like Perlman, I'm sure. No, not really. No, you don't. Okay, well, no. he composed the music for Disney's Fantasia, actually, oh. and he's extremely accomplished. Israeli uh, violinist and he actually uh, has polio so he can't walk wow. and um, so he, it's it, it, you should, I, I'm sure you'd really appreciate uh, if you look him up on YouTube like, on yeah. his concertos um, I, I, find, I mean I, I think he's a lovely man and he's mm -hmm. done some amazing things you know for in music and for humanity um, and I found his character his personhood really inspiring uh, it, it, just like watching him get up on stage, you know, it, 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 he, he, he has these, 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 sorry, you can't see my head, he has these two crutches, yeah. right? And he just, he humbles up on stage and, you know, he sits down and he bows and, and then somebody hands him his, his wow. violin. And I just, I just was so easily able to put myself in his shoes, right? Can wow. you imagine growing up and your legs don't work wow. and, and you want to achieve something. So you're like, hey, my legs don't work, but maybe I can create something beautiful with my hands. Maybe I can, yeah. I can work really hard and become a, a violinist. And, and that's what he did. And I find that so inspiring. Yeah. And, back um, to the limiting he, factors, you know, sometimes. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, I would like yeah. to reach out to him too, if I can. Um, yeah, and course. also another, yeah. another important piece uh, too, in kind of touching more upon the, the industry side of, of, you know, creating an animated production yeah. um, is you need to get some big names on board because you yeah. want you want uh, name recognition. You want people, yeah. oh, he's in that. Right. Oh, I want to see that. And that's yeah. just how it works. So, um, so, so, so yeah, yeah that, so that leads to let's let's sort of lead this conversation into business because that's you know we've already talked about languages, culture, so many different super cool things. Right. I just want to focus I, it on. on you got the, it. Just, yeah. Since you since I brought up it's like promise, I just want to finish that uh, notion. Please, please, please. Yeah. He, again, of many inspirations, uh, I thought that he might inspire this character Khalil, yeah. who's uh, Sh Shira's uh, you know animal companion, right? So it's it's she, and it, it's trying to so that, you know there's always you know there's all these Disney movies, this, you know these funny animal companions, you know like Zazu and and um, Yago from from Aladdin, so Zazu's from uh, Lion King, right? So these funny animal uh, companions that help bring comic relief and. And in this, in, in this case, um, yeah, it's trying to base that in reality, right? So um, they're, they're these psychological reflections, these imaginary friends, right? And they help Shir and Amal, uh deal with this trauma they face, the loss of their older brothers. So, so um, I thought that, um, I thought maybe Khalil would be at least partially inspired by Yitzhak Perlman. And then just to finish that idea is that uh, Amal too has this imaginary friend that she creates for mm -hmm. the same reason. And uh, Mizmari is this uh, wisecracking pigeon, right? And Khalil is a dove. And uh, I thought maybe, yeah, again, all these ideas are subject to change, but there's this wonderful musician uh, who I recommend anybody look up uh, named Ibrahim Malouf. He's this French Lebanese jazz musician, and mm -hmm. his father was uh, Naive, um, uh, uh, Nassim Malouf, uh, who was actually the founder of Arabic jazz because he wow. modified his, his trumpet to be able to play quarter tones to That's play awesome. that Arabic scale. And, so I, I found I, I loved his music and I, wow. I found it really inspiring. So I thought that maybe you know so Khalil means 
flute in Hebrew and um, me, and it means more also means flute in, in Hebrew. At least they, they both mean uh, like woodwind reed instruments. So I, I thought that maybe um, the, you know, they would, they, like Yitzhak Perlman would, would, would wow. play the music of, of Khalil and maybe this guy, Ibrahim Alouf, if, if you'd be interested, would, would play his, his, his jazz trumpet as, as uh, Mismar. So wow. let's move on to the business side. Yeah, sure. Well, just a final <laughs> thought on, on music. So that's really cool. I'm actually, right now, I am uh, in, you know, doing piano lessons with a, with a teacher. And what we're doing is we're, we took uh, Arabian Nights from the Aladdin movie, and we're kind of like composing around the harmony from that song. So, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's super cool, you know, just kind of like how you can also learn from different cultures by learning through the music side of things and, and learn how, you know, all of the history and perspectives translate to composition um that's that's sort of really really cool so let me um let's move uh into the business uh part right now so you mentioned that you know a big part is creating brand and you know reaching your end customer and putting your word out there how are you trying to do that are you trying to are you using social media actively are you producing <laughs> clips are you doing written work how you know because you you have so many different abilities and and so many different cool things to talk about how are you trying to put out all those messages like what platforms are you using what's your strategy <laughs> so i have to admit i'm a bit of an old soul I, i've never been one to just like you know jump to instagram i gotta post this i gotta you know advertise what i'm doing all the time yeah. um so and, and then also you know i i've you know i do have a lot of uh, uh people on my team and a lot of advisors who i'm so grateful for but it's really hard especially i mean when you're just starting out and you don't have you know, money to pay people and um, and, and, you know, when, especially when it's just in the idea phase, you know, which was now a long time ago, but you know, it's, it's, it's hard to get people really on board yeah. to commit. So I've been largely doing the vast majority of the work and it's, it's really hard. So just, you know, spreading myself a little too thin, it's, it's been, it's been hard to really, you know, get on my social media game. Um, but uh, so it's something I got to work on more. And so part of the reason why, why I'm here, you know, I want to, I want to produce more content and I want people to, to know me and, and what I'm doing. Um, so, and thank you so much for the opportunity. I'm, I'm really grateful. Please. Thanks um, so much for your time, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. This has been an amazing chat for me. So. Yeah. 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 Um, right. So, um, um, so, you know, that's, yeah, that's coming. I've, I've been kind of like, you know, building up a lot of content and, and trying to create more and more. And, you know, I'm also, I know as among the uh, many other things I'm learning is drawing and animation. So I'm trying to wow. uh, create my own content. How, how are you um, learning that? How, you, wait, how are you learning that? Are you very, doing very, courses? very slowly. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's lots of, I mean, like you can look at my YouTube history. There's so honestly this like, well, so, so, so one thing I did, um, so uh, yeah, I told you I was frustrated with school, you know, I, there all these requirements. I have to, you know, be a, a political science major when really I want to create my own interdisciplinary major to academically incubate this idea. And I was so frustrated. I wasn't able to do that. Then I'm like, you know what? Screw this. I'm, I'm done. I'm going to leave and be yeah. myself. Yeah. Right. And, and um, you know, I, I, that's the kind of, I think that's the kind of attitude you need to have as an entrepreneur is just like, you know, basically it's, it's you, you got to, um, you, you, you can't just trust the system, right? You know, yeah. it's like, Hey, maybe, maybe you have a, you know, maybe it doesn't work for everybody. Maybe, maybe you have an idea that's better and you know, it's, it's hard. So I still don't know if, 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 if it's going to work, but again, I'm going to try as hard as I can until it does. Um, so, all right, continuing on the business line. So um, the, the basic business model is, you know, is step-by-step -step approach. So I obviously began with, with research and, and learning, right? That, those, so obviously the first thing you have to, you have to learn how to write, you have to try to understand the industry that you're going into. You have to, yep. in this case, in this case, again, you have to understand music and culture and language and religion, and all, you know, all these different <laughs> ideas. Right. Um, yeah. so that, that was the first step. Um, and then, you know, this, okay, you gotta you know, have this idea for the story. So I got to you know, write down, it's, you know, it, with any creative process, you know, something I've learned is actually really, and I hope, I hope this is, um, helpful to anybody uh, reading this. It's like, you, you can actually create a whole lot more than you think you can if yeah. you actually just start That's doing it. it. And, it it's crazy, and then it's, right? Yeah. And, and then, and then uh, really the, 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 how you make something good, especially if it's drawing or writing or music, is, is, is just slowly chipping away at it and, and examining it and getting other people yeah. to critique it and just you slowly make it better and better. And then you have something and everyone's like, whoa, you're this incredible artist. You know, it's like I, it looks so easy at the, at the end, but it, it, it's, it's a hard and, and long process. But um. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, or, or, that's actually, that's actually a really good point. I want to highlight, like you just, you, you're, you're, I, I think people are not aware of like how much they can actually produce, right? 
when I started sort of work on the startup on the tech product, I had no idea about many things. And I, we just, you know, I started taking courses on Udemy and like learning different things. And then I started working on computer AV design and then the engineering and then other things. And then as I kept going, I couldn't believe I had like a final product that actually became a patent an invention. I was like, wow, like I, I it, this is in, like insane in like a year and a half of just putting in the work, putting in the work, putting in the work and learning from different sources. You can have some magical piece of art or composition or music. Yeah. So it's and really just a matter of sitting down and, and, and putting in the work, you know? Yeah. And then the cool thing is that after you do that, then you know how to do it, right? Yeah, um, exactly. So and I, how, I, yeah. And then you just want to transition onto other things all the time. Just, yeah. you just keep on having ideas and yeah. Super yeah so cool. I, I just wanted to, to, to follow up on that point. So, yeah, so I left school um, last year, um, and that was hard for me, honestly, because, so again, I was still very early in this idea, and this is massive idea. Like, again, who am I, right? How can I possibly do this? Um, but, again, it's it just so meaningful, uh, so many passions in my life that brought me to this. Uh, so I just, I just kept doing it. Um, and, yeah, I, I, I learned a lot from YouTube. Um, I, I took some Coursera courses. Um, again, and, and, you know, again, it, it was hard, you know, my, my parents were not very supportive and again, there's a lot of doubt. So I was, I was really depressed uh, a lot of the time, but you know, again, you, you got, you got, you can't give up, right. That, that's the whole, that's the, and, and again, so I guess jumping back to the Joseph Campbell thing, right. So I, I listened to a lot of his lectures, um, and he's famous for writing this book, uh, the hero of the thousand faces, um, and also the, the, um, um, the power of myth. Um, so basically, so it's this, yeah, so I talked a little bit about it earlier. So it's, it's this idea that behind all of these, these myths, and, and again, I, th I think this comes down to any ideas, books, stories uh, that have withstood the test of time that are still around today after you know, thousands of years, that they must contain truth. Otherwise, we would have, like, if, if they were misleading us, we, we would have, if they, if they were hurting us, we, like, you know, we're all, we try to be rational people. We try to think about our own survival and thrival <laughs> yeah. i'll just make up a word um, um so so they, they contain truth so um it's just it's, when i was feeling so down and so doubtful and and what am i doing i was, was reading reading this and you know it's it's this journey you start at the bottom right you, the classic so his books informed star wars right so you the classic you know you have this boy luke right who you know yeah you know it's just the boy right and and uh then his, his parents are killed Right. And that's the inciting incident. And same with Batman and Superman and, you know, yeah. and Harry Potter. Right. You just just a boy. And then this inciting incident propels them to action, to to to, to give them this mission. And they face obstacles and they don't know how to do things, but they, they try and they fail. And then they find the mentor. Right. In this case, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Right. Or Dumbledore. Right. And, and um, they get friends, you know, um, Han Solo. And uh, I like Harry Potter a lot, too. So Ron and Hermione. And, uh, and, and they, they, they make it happen that they, they, they don't they give do. up and, and they, 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 they climb the mountain. Right. Um, and sometimes, you know, oftentimes in storytelling that they, they find that, uh, you know, that after, you know, that maybe they, they really want the, uh, the princess, right. Or something like that. And, or, or they really want to slay the dragon. And then, uh, at, at the end, uh, after they do that, they realize that what they had the whole time, right. Their family or whatever it was, is, is really what, what, what was, what, what they, what they really want it, right? You, you you learn, you learn what you really want, right? Um, so I'm still I'm still learning, right? So just trying to figure that out. But um, it, it helped me. It, it basically, my point being that you know, in that in that dark place, right? It's like, you know, what if you look at yourself as the hero, and these are just obstacles you're facing, and if you can get through it, then and if you can find mentors and allies to help you, and you can you know, you face these challenges, you can come out on the other end of this mountain as a as a stronger person. Right. So that, that really helped me. Um, I think, um, so, all right, <laughs> back to the business side. Um, so the basic, uh, the basic business model is that I want to create a graphic novel as the minimum viable product. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's the story plus the illustrations. Right. And this is just very, you know, and, um, my goal is, so, so I think I can do that in about, uh, I think I can have the script in about six months from now. Um, and, and I think three months from then I can have a, a nice storyboard. And then um, I, I, my, my, my strongest limiting factor at the moment is that I need, uh, and this also makes it a little bit more expensive, is I need basically two, two people, at least two people in, uh, for each role, right? Because it needs to be balanced, right? So I need an Israeli illustrator and a Palestinian illustrator to co-illustrate the storyboard that I, that I create, right? right? Again, with, with the help of lots of, of, of mentors and advisors and 
different people from different perspectives to, to oversee, you know, both the storyboard and the writing and illustration to you know, try to achieve this balance. Right. Um, so basically I think that I can, I can publish, you know, God willing, this graphic novel in eight, let's say 17 months, something like that. Um, and then the idea would be to go in like a reading campaign and, and through grassroots connections to read the book to kids and, you know, Israel, Palestine, and, and uh, you know, uh, and Jordan, and, and, you know, Saudi Arabia, and also the United States, and I really everywhere try to uh, build bridges and, and use this opportunity of, you know, be, you know to, to gain publicity, to reach out to journalists, and, you know, to produce more content on social media, and develop partnerships with different nonprofits and NGOs, and, and you know, and, and get more funding, you know, finally launch our crowdfunding campaign. Um, and what I'd really like to do after that is, um, and also par partially overlapping too, uh, is to produce this as a, a stage musical, wow. right? Uh, because essentially the idea being, you know, is going step to step, right? A stage musical is much less expensive than a, uh, you know, an epic animated feature film. Um, and um, so basically if you combine a graphic novel or a comic book with a, a stage musical, you have a, a animated musical, right? So um, it, it's it's also it, it you know I've never done this. I've never made it, uh, you know, produced a full stage musical before. I've never produced a full animation before. I've never produced a uh, full graphic novel before. But you know, as I as I struggle with these ideas and learn and you know again build friends, allies and and mentors, I you know we can make it happen. Um, and then so so. The, the, um, Roughly, um, it, so just the timeline, right? Um, so after the, the graphic novel, I, I'd say maybe like 16 months uh, to uh, produce the, um, to, to you know, produce and, and distribute or, or perform the, uh, the stage musical. And then followed by like roughly three years of animation production. Again, building all that clout to bring together all these producers and donors and, um, and you know, and, and, and build you know, crowd crowdfunding and, and build you know a fan base and all, all the real, real platform. Um, and the the final goal in this timeline is to apply this methodology to a self sufficient independent animation studio that uh, um, that that you know brings that can bring together you know all these you know different advisors, diplomats, religious authorities, uh, academics, what have you, with you know rep fully representational production team. To address really any uh, intractable conflict, whether it's you know a refugee crisis or a civil war, or interreligious conflict, um, you know to, to to tell a dual narrative story that exposes the next generation to the humanity, culture, and perspective of the other. So, for example, you know maybe a, a story about the uh, India-Pakistan conflict or something like that. Um, and so, so the, I mean that 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 you know that's that's also something that that drove me right is this this really beautiful dream of. You know, my career being, you know, getting to do what I love is, you know, is cartoons, right? And, and to help make the world a better place and getting to, you know, loving culture, getting to, to travel around, like around the world and try to, you know, make, make animation to, to heal, heal conflicts between two different people. So that, that is just something that was so, so powerful that, that you know, that I got to make this happen, right? Yeah, and you're going to crush it. I know that's um, so uh, it's going to go really oh, well. Thank you. Thank you. Especially uh, when we I get Baron say, Boyman to the next. Uh, I really, really appreciate that. It'll be, that. It'll be really cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My, there's a long list of people I, I'm, I'm going to reach out to. For soon. sure. Um, Absolutely. One, somebody I actually, somebody I've, I'm, I've talked to before that I'm planning on, on talking to more, which is a great proof of concept and I, I think really interesting, mm -hmm. is this guy, Dr. And it's also really, you know, it's uh, business entrepreneurship and sure. specifically social entrepreneurship, which I really love. Um, this guy, Dr. Naif uh, Mutawa. Uh, he's uh, Kuwaiti and uh, you know, he's like a million degrees. He's like a, a clinical psychologist, you know, so it's like an MBA from like, I think Columbia and you know, so Tufts and, um, and so he has a, he has a um, award from Barack Obama in social entrepreneurship for creating the 99, which is the first Islamic superhero series which began as a comic book series and they worked with uh, DC concerts and you know, the, uh, the idea was to create uh, Islamic role models for young kids to you know, combat extremism, right? Um, really, really lovely, uh, exciting series. I've read some of the comics and, and it was scaled to uh, uh, like, you know, uh, like at least I think it's like 80 episodes, maybe 40 episodes. Uh, this animation production is like $40 million total production for this company Endemol and, and, um, was, so what's fascinating about it, what, what makes it such a powerful proof of concept 
is, or among other things, it, well, first of all, the way that they navigated these, you know, Islamic doctrines and, and values and, and, and rules, right? So, you know, there's, there's even, it's, it's so complicated, but, you know, there's even, um, it, you know, if you get really, really strict, there's notions that you can't even, you know, draw anthropomorphic beings. You can't draw people because only God can breathe life into, into people. And, and, you know, animation is the idea of breathing life into inanimate, ob inanimate objects, right? Yeah, uh, so, and then there's even like there's taboos about music and it's really hard. So he actually had a fatwa issued against him by both ISIS and the Grand Mufti of Saudi Arabia. Oh my so God. ISIS, you know, he, he, wow. he didn't, uh, yeah, you know, it's, 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 I mean, that's scary, obviously, but it's also fascinating. Yeah. So I don't know what he did with a fatwa from ISIS. You know, I, I, you know, I guess you don't negotiate with terrorists, but with the Grand Mufti of Saudi Arabia, from, from what I learned, you know, again, I take everything I say with a grain of salt. Um, they, they actually. Courts to defend their principles. Andrew, this, I just lo this... I lost you for two seconds. Can you go back to what he did with Saudi Arabia? I'm sorry about that. Okay, right. That. So, um, no, it's okay. So, um, so what he did was, um, he 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 essentially uh, fought this this fatwa in in Islamic clerical court, and he actually won. Right. So he had to defend wow. his his principles that no, this comic this this idea does not uh, does not invalidate the values of Islam. It actually promotes you know uh, uh you know what we what we want uh you know for our children right um and so that was really powerful and, and that you know that again it's one of many pieces of concept so I, I, he's you know he, he's among you know many a long list of people that I, well i have contacted him and again I'm, I, now that i've that was that was a couple months ago so now that he basically said like come back to me when, once you've a little, a little bit more developed so you know i've been working really hard since then so i'm looking forward to hopefully having a nice conversation with him um and yeah, that, it, just, it, it speaks to the, you know, the, the bridge between um, creative production and entrepreneurship and, again, specifically social entrepreneurship. Awesome. Um, and then I also want to say, and you talked about, you know, in terms of talking more about business, that, uh, so this might be just interesting for you know, anybody listening that is interested in entrepreneurship. Sure. So, so, yeah, it's, it's, again, specifically social entrepreneurship. So it, it's kind of complicated, but, um, um you know, this, this idea of there's like a B Corp and, and there's, you know, this, this hybrid for-profit, non-profit, right? So it's right now in the, the current, current legal frameworks is like, you're either non-profit or for-profit, right? So in my opinion, and I think that the, the laws are changing and, and we will see this trend change, but that it should, rather than being a, an offer on switch, it should be a, a scale, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, if you're, you know, well, first of all, and I, I really believe that, you know, so this idea of the triple bottom line, you know, environment, society, and, um, and economics, right? And, you know, so that these, these three ideas are not mutually exclusive, that you can create a product that does not harm the environment or, you know, even helps the environment, does not harm people, even helps people, and doesn't hurt your wallet, actually, you know, you can yep. create, you know, get financial, financially rewarded. So mm -hmm. I really believe that that's, that's, you know, for some reason, that's like almost a new idea. I mean, I, maybe like the nineties about it started to be, you know, rise. Um, yeah. So now, now, you know, people have, have really accepted that. And, and that, that's really encouraging to me in the, um, the trends in, in business that we can, we can use, you know, I, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I try to believe in balance, right? So again, so he talks about the individual versus the collective and masculine and feminine and, and uh, uh, so, and, 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 you know, um, in this case, it's it's um, socialism and capitalism, right? So there's a lot of people that are like socialism's evil and capitalism's evil. So I think that probably, you know, I I do I do think capitalism is important. I do think that individual freedom is important and that competition drives innovation. But then you have uh, the others. Uh, the the converse of that is that, what about greed, right? What about you know yeah. what about um, you know success breeds success. So you have a select few group of people in the world that become really successful. You know, I mean, 15 percent of people, and then you also have top 1%, right, in this bell curve. Uh, so it's like, you know, they're going to keep winning while other people that are failing are going to keep failing. That, that creates massive inequality. So obviously we need to try to find a balance between the two. Um, right, so I, I, just along that point, um, basically what, what, I, what I'm trying to create is this hybrid structure where we're both bringing in donations and investments. So we're mm -hmm. you know, working with a, a lot of different uh, nonprofits and NGOs and, you know, and governments. Um, that, you know, to, and again, in terms of diversity of uh, perspective, you know, to, to get donations because essentially it's like, we all want peace, bottom line, but,
but we have different ways. So some of us have different ways of approaching them. And again, there's a spectrum of extremism and moderation and open-mindedness. So, you know, we've all, we have these groups in the middle that are, okay, we can collaborate, right? And then we have these groups in the end that are a lot more difficult. So it's, it's, it's a, I think I brought up this idea. I didn't finish it. Um, so I'm going to try to finish it now. Um, so, you know, how do you get these, these, these more extreme groups to, to be part of this? So there's two main methods, right? Uh, one of them is that, um, you know, we're going to say, if you, if you're part of this, right, then you're ensuring that your perspective is being represented in our product, in our story, right? If, if, if you're, if the, if, you know, on, on this bell curve, right, if, if, if this side, if, if the organizations on this side are part of it, but you're not, then you know, it's, it's a, dis, it's an imbalance and, and your, your perspective isn't being represented. So you know, you're creating that balance. So that's one. And the other is looking at it as a form of competition, right? So competition is healthy, right? Sometimes, and as I said, it produces innovation and yeah. all these things, uh, it solves, solves problems. Um, so like a great model is the Olympics, right? You've all, especially, you know, I mean, um, I thank God there's a lot less, uh, you know, you know, we're not, we don't have a uh, world war on our hands right now, but um, yeah, they had the Olympics during when you know, between countries that you know were at war, right? It's a way of you know, and that's part of what sports you do is they, they get rid of you know this this aggression, right? So it's um and same thing with 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 you know it's like um when I was in there's actually a good way to bring it up is uh, when I was when I was in the refugee camp, right? The the Koreans they they still harbor a um a, uh, you know, a tremendous dislike I'll say for the Japanese because of uh, the aftermath of, of World War II, right? Uh, I won't get into that, but. Um, so basically, they, they have this really powerful notion of how to deal with that, which is like, we're going to outcompete them. We're like our, our Samsung against their Sony, right? our Kias against their Subarus, we're going to be better than them. And, you know, so they're going to have to deal with that, right? So that's a really powerful and productive way of dealing with, with, you know, with, with problems. It's a really effective form of, of conflict mediation. Um, so where was I going with this? Um, I think you were talking about the B Corp structure. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. So talking about the balance between, you know, these two energies, right. And ideas. Um, yeah. So, so um, it, it's difficult le legally, but um, uh, it, it, right. So, so in terms of bouncing the, that, that's the, the nonprofit donor side. Right. And then on the other side, you have the investment. So, I mean, obviously, you know, <laughs> my head has been a bit in the clouds. I'll say I, I use this metaphor that I really like that um, way back when, especially three years ago, I created this castle in the sky. And wow. ever since then, I've been trying to reel down this castle uh, to, to the earth. Yeah. Right? So, um, so it's massive. But so at the same time, in order to solve a ma or in order to solve massive problems, you need a massive solution. So, um, you know, and I, massive order, practicality too, right? You have massive to be practicality very, too. Yeah. It's yeah. a step-by-step -step methodical approach. You need the right Absolutely. people. Absolutely. You need to have a you know be a good leader and have you know have a you know lot, uh, deep knowledge base to tap into. And you know, so it's been tremendous learning experience and. Um, but so basically the idea is that, and, you know, if we're going to, you know, I, I want to create a, a massive epic animated musical feature film that certainly all the people like, or at least a vast majority of the people affected by these conflicts will see. Right. But also, um, you know, in terms of balancing, uh, the, the economics with the, the social impact, right. It's, it, you know, it also needs to be an awesome story with awesome music and amazing characters that the whole world's going to want to see that's going to help, help make this financially sustainable. Um, so along those lines, um, there's, there's a couple of, of strategies. Um, so one, one of which in terms of um, how to make this have a really positive impact and also how to address the, the people who need to see it the most. So in this particular case, this, this first production, Sharing Them All, the goal is, is firstly to reach Israeli-Palestinian children, mm -hmm. then uh, the, uh, we'll say uh, Jewish and Palestinian diaspora, and then uh, you have the you know, larger Arab world and the larger Middle Eastern North Africa, and then the even larger Muslim world in terms of exposing these peoples to the humanity, culture, and perspective of the other, right? So how do you do that? Again, we, we talked about like these fatwas and these uh, ministers of information. And, and um, yeah, so obviously extremely difficult. Again, representation and balance are, are, are crucial. Um, and, uh, and, you know, and working, you know, collaboration. Um, but so, so among these strategies, right, is uh, principally, um, uh, well, you know, it's, we talked about language earlier. So um, it's, it's, you know, producing the story in not only English and Hebrew and Arabic, but also all of the sub-dialects of Arabic and, and Persian and, and, and really, you know, I want to yeah. get the, the 
best translators. I want to get the translators who translated Harry Potter into Arabic and Persian to, to translate this and work carefully with them and, and try to find, like I talked about all the commonalities between uh, these languages, like to, to try to as much as possible use, you know, use words in the dialogue that have similar connotations, but uh, cross-culturally, right? And, and, and same thing with, with the lyrics, right? For the songs to, to really try to, to use words and ideas that are cr cross-culturally compatible right um it's so hard to know, but it's yeah. also fascinating to, to learn um so that's one um another one is into and making it accessible right so i i want to um distribute you know, distribute it for free or heavily subsidized uh specifically uh in in the you know in theaters and and you know through community center screenings and stuff like that in in the regions with with these uh target social demographic populations right in, in their in their dialects right yeah. um and the idea being that we're going to create this really awesome uh product that is going to that we will 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 be able to subsidize the uh the distribution in for our target social demographic audience by making the money from our mainstream audience so namely in, in english and chinese and russian and and spanish right um and uh yeah, there's, there's lots of other ideas. Uh, that's, sorry. That, that's awesome. <laughs> so now I want to ask you sort of to wrap it up uh, a couple of more questions. Uh, first is, what are the three trends you see in your industry right now? Oof. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I'll start with one, which um, is the politicalization of Hollywood, I'll say. And, and it, it's a tricky subject because really it's always been politicized. So that's the thing is that storytelling and teaching, right? Universities and any kind of media production, you know, it's, it's like we, we, you know, we want to, sometimes we want to believe that, you know, things that we're seeing are true or even universally true. And that's what a lot of religions claim. Um, but, you know, really we need to recognize our own biases. So I think right now we're, we're, we're I mean, obviously I think, well, Maybe it's not obvious. I don't know. Hollywood uh, today has a very liberal uh, leaning, I think. Um, so, which you know, for for good or for or for you know, I mean, again, I believe in balance. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of different ideas out there, but um, so that that's one trend certainly in, in Hollywood specifically. Again, another thing in in the, in the industry is that Hollywood, you know, is uh, there's a lot of money there and yeah. there's a tremendous history of beautiful and amazing productions. Yeah. But we're also seeing a lot of other. Uh, countries starting to produce amazing content and movies too. Like uh, I just uh, saw this beautiful um, United Arab Emirates production. Uh, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll throw a um, you know the, the I'll, I'll name drop here at uh, Bilal, which I highly recommend. Which is um, you know this beautiful animated feature film about Bilal, who is the first um, sl slave to uh, become a Muslim, uh, who's famous for being the the first muazzin, the the caller to prayer. And you know, beautiful, beautiful, and they got Akon to do some of the music, and uh, awesome production. Um, and it is like Nollywood is like Nigerian Hollywood, and there's obviously yeah. Bollywood. That's been, a, and then yeah. the Chinese film market, they're they're waking up, right? And there's a lot in Saudi Arabia. They're uh, in the last year, you know, they're they're starting to uh, open up all these theaters, and and there's again uh, so much money there, right? So uh, uh, like, um, I mean, really, like you know, art and culture is often a luxury, so. Um, further talking about trends and you know, bring up the coronavirus. So that's a, a bit scary. I'm not going to lie is that yeah. when, when you have people trying, you know, fighting for survival rather than thrival, right. Um, uh, you know, culture takes, takes the side because, you know, we got to think about our, our health yeah. first. So um, right. There's not like all of, all of, uh, you know, Hollywood is stopped, right. There's, there's like no productions going on right now. Yeah. Um, and you have a lot of people like me, the, the writers, uh, who are like, okay, well, I just stay at home any, all day anyway trying to write. So, like, you know, my, my life isn't that di <laughs> as different maybe. Um, yeah. But so there's a lot of people that are going to be writing right now. And, you know, God willing, the, uh, you know, this pandemic uh, closes soon. But um, it, it might take, you know, a, a little bit of time for us to, to bounce back to the point where, because yeah. up, until, up until now, we were seeing, like, some – some of the most amazing television productions um and uh yeah so i and i think well, well i think that that um like you know netflix and and um you know this the streaming war that's that's something that's you know in terms of industry trends that's that's something that, that i think has been a big part of the public conscious 
Um, so you see how that plays out. So I, I did want to just say this. I mean, it's going to make me seem a little crazy, but I, so I talked about, um, or, or, you know, maybe just really ambitious. I don't know, but, um, you know, I talked about, you know, you need a massive solution to a massive problem. Yeah. So, and I talked about like this, you know, comp- uh, this collaborative model. So on, on the non, the nonprofit donor side, right. So the same, I, I, I'd like to uh, pioneer a, a similar model on the, um, on the for-profit side. So I, I, you know, I think that if you can get some of these massive production companies to work together to really make this thing mainstream, right. Where they all, they all pitch in their different expertise and also finances and they all get a slice of the pie. Um, but basically, again, it's, and, and I think it follows this model of balance too, in that, you know, they're not, it's not shut everything down. We're just going to collaborate, right? We're, you know, we're going to just, you know, come together. It's all right. We're still going to have other competing uh, productions, but we're, we can also collaborate too. Right. Um, so I, I think that that model could be, could be really great. And then in addition to working with, with, you know, some of these ma- uh, major international mainstream production companies, it's really important to work with local, you know, Palestinian, Israeli, Arab production companies, and, and again, we're also seeing a big rise in in uh, in, in, in production anime in in, uh, in the Arab world, and even specifically animation. There's some, some really, and I as I just said, like Bilal and a, a number of other ones. Um, so some really really great uh, animations coming coming out of the Arab world. And uh, yeah, so I hope that answers your question. Yeah, absolutely. So the the top three, I guess, I, I took from from what you said was the politicization of Hollywood. Lots of writers at home right now due to coronavirus and also okay. the ability to do crowdsourcing and just get massive support to a massive problem. Is that right? All right. Yeah, cool. sure. Awesome. <laughs> a so lot of just, ideas there. Yeah. So final, final question and, and wrap up. What are the top three tips you would give to, to entrepreneurs and people who want to do <laughs> solve global challenges and, and, you know, become an entrepreneur? That's a great question. Thank you. <laughs> um so it it can be really tough right uh, especially when you i mean so so um and actually just watched you you, 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 interviewed, you interviewed sarah pomerantz uh, recently so she she, she answered uh, second i just watched it uh, recently to kind of prep for this interview so yeah. uh, she made a really good point that um it, there's, there's a dichotomy here it's like really hard to start out when you're young because you have so much you need to learn and you also probably don't have that much money Right. And those are two, you need to know a lot. You need to have the resources to produce things. So those are obviously two important limiting factors, but at the same time, when you're in university, you do have access, access to a lot of resources, like, you know, professors and students who want to get, you know, experience and, you know, a lot, lots of, you know, diverse people from diverse backgrounds and there are competitions you can apply for, but you really, you need to apply yourself to, to make that happen. And you need to, uh, you know, to be starting a business, you really need to be able to put yourself out there and be, sociable and and um you know, know how to connect with people and, and and network which is a you know a problematic word maybe right? it's like you know the, the uh, utilitarian way of looking at people but you know so but what's most important from that is, is how you really build connections and, and again hopefully this this pursuit of authenticity right like i you know trying to be open with myself and you be open with yourself and you know, we, we can connect on a personal level and we want to achieve great things that are going to make the world a better place. So let's, let's share the love. Let's, let's, let's make something happen. Um, so that was one, I get the, the I hit multiple topics there. Okay. Um, so how about the second one is, is don't give up. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I, you know, my parents have been telling me for a long time, like get a real job. Right. Um, and I kept like, no, I like need to do this. It's my passion. Right. I can't stop thinking about it. And you, if you keep working at something, if you focus, eventually you're going to know more than other people do. Yeah. And then you're going to continue to more and to know more than other people do. And you're going to continue to find more resources. And you're going to continue to connect with more people and it, 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 it will get easier. And, and um, also from there, you can, you can pivot. You can, if, if you, if you start a company, for, first of all, you're learning so much. I mean, like now I know how to start a company and right now I know how to, you know, I've learned a lot about managing people. I've learned yeah. a lot about leadership. I've, I've learned so much about animation and storytelling and language and culture and religion and music and all these things, right? And it's fascinating. And now I know them and I can use the, those, those tools to do other things if, if in case, in case, you know, God forbid it doesn't work out or, or maybe, maybe it's not my, my path, you know? Um, but it, you never give up, you know, be, be flexible to pivoting. Right. And I've pivoted in many ways. My, my pivots are a little bit different than your pivots, for example, or for pivots or a lot of other yeah. entrepreneurs, but you know, my pivots are 
you know, in this, we're producing a story. So my, my pivots are like, could be like changing one word in, 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 a, in, a, in a sentence, a dialogue between two characters or, you know, making one character have a, have a slightly different background or, you know, lost their mother. Or so, and, and these tiny minute changes can have a huge effect on the way my audience perceives uh, the story, these ideas that I'm trying to tell. So again, the, the, the three major pivots was again, the, from the story, uh, the legend of Shira to the story of Shira and Mifta. I don't even know if I fully explain this, but so I, I'd like to, to from uh, Shira and Mifta, uh, again, you know, boy, girl, uh, you know, unrequited love, uh, you know, forbidden love story, uh, you know, and bring these two people together with the music um, to the story of Shira and Amal. So this was a very strategic pivot um, this, this was, you know, uh, again, if we're, if we're trying to access these two, the, um, you know, the, the other, right. If we're trying to make this, this story accessible to the people that really need to hear it the most, we can't offend their, their core values. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that would see, you know, intermarriage and immediately, you know, no way I'm taking my, my kid to see that, or, you know, no way this yeah. film is even gonna have a chance of entering uh, my country's media channels. Right, so make, so making a story between a friendship between two girls, right, allows allows that's one really powerful change to the core yeah. of the story. That still, and it didn't it didn't affect like the plot stayed largely the same, right? It just changed from from like you know unrequited or you know or, or star star crossed love to to friendship, yeah. right, um, and sisterhood and and also humanism, right? That we're we're both humans, um, but at the same time, it's this careful again going back to this theme of balance, right? It's this it's you know how do we how do we, um, you know, suggest that you know, all these 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 different cultures, these different religions, these different philosophies or countries are, you know, they want the same thing, right? Um, and we're all human beings. To also understanding that our cultures and our value systems and our traditions have true meaning in this world, and that's and that's why they exist. That's why we believe them is because there's tremendous truth in them. That's why they, these ideas have existed for thousands of years. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I know I'm on a tangent, but no, that's good. Um, so, so you mentioned. Do I still have one more to address? Yes, one more to go. One more to go. <laughs> yes. One so more. Oh God. Okay. Um, I'll be your third. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I mean, this is huge, and this has been hard for me, right? Because, um, you know, is is you know fi finding the right support support group. You know, yeah. so you gotta have have friends to rely on. You gotta yeah. have you know co-founders. You you gotta have mentors. Yeah. Right. But also you need to rely on yourself. It, it's you're going to if you want to start a company, if you want to start something, you're going to have to do most of the work. And, and if you keep working at it, you can make something that other people want to be part of. Yeah. But it's going to it's that's and that's why, you know, that, that's why entrepreneurs, you know, it's huge risk, but potentially huge reward. You know, yeah. That's why there's a potential huge reward is because it's a huge risk. Yeah. So but you got to make that risk in order to build the thing that will get you know, people to, to support you. Absolutely. So there's, there's number three. Andrew, thank you so much for everything. I just uh, uh, have Pablo, any final, so, so final, great to you. final questions or comments you'd like to uh, tell the um, audience to wrap it up? All right. Well, dear audience, thank you so much for listening to me. And I, I know I've uh, taken a lot of your time. I hope it's been interesting. I hope you've, you've learned something. And uh, yeah, I, I, I hope you, you all look forward to seeing Sharon them all, uh, you know, in, in uh, bookstores near you and hopefully theaters near you and and uh, i'm really really working very hard to try to make this happen absolutely so i really appreciate your support yeah Dude, this, <laughs> this was awesome and for everyone watching this uh i'm gonna post all of andrew's work in the comment section in the description uh so andrew if you could provide me with links and all the things you'd like to share with the audience watching definitely the videos. yeah I'm also going to share this on LinkedIn and perhaps, you know, some clips on TikTok. We'll see how I can put your word out there because this was really, really an interesting talk. So thanks for everything. Um, and, you know, please, please send me those links. Uh, and also, a yeah, of course, thumbnail. I'm so grateful. Yeah. And if you could send me a thumbnail. For you got me, it. You got yeah, it. Yeah, that'd be really cool. All right. Of course. Well, of course. Yeah. Thanks, thank you so much for your time. Please. It's really been a pleasure. It's my pleasure. All right. <laughs> see you, man. Thank you so much.